Hey Scale Nation, Joe here again, ScaleFreak.com, coming to bring you a total shift in gears. Uh, this is going to be more about Airsoft, which is something that the entire Scale Freak crew is kind of really into right now. But you know what? We're doing a lot of practice here in the garage and building all these targets to shoot at over the winter. There was like, dude, how are we going to uh, control some of this stuff? So I asked around for a bunch of places and they're like, Man, with these BBs and with these rifles and with these pistols, there is no way to control how these BBs are going to go. But I was pretty sure I could make something happen. So what I'm going to do here is show you the targets that uh, we set up to not only be able to practice all winter, but also to control where the BBs are going. So let's check it out. Steve? As you can see, we can put up these cardboard targets and what do we have behind us for control? Well, first, we started with a piece of plywood. It doesn't matter really what you're gonna use. I just needed something on the wall because there's a, an insulation on the exterior wall that we were actually shooting through and it's brick on the other side. So we wanted to put something up as a backing. Uh, the problem is, is if you shoot this on its own, that winds up on the other side of the room. Uh, many shots we took that we were ducking and moving because it was flying right back at us. So. All we did was we took the plywood. This is a piece of two by four. We cut it to three feet long, and then we put a two piece of two by two on there as well, again, three feet long. The purpose of that is something nice and strong to be able to hang off of, and of course, something to be able to hold this target a little bit off the wall. So now this thing is gonna be four inches off the wall. You did see a second ago how the BBs were hitting it at full auto and not quite touching the wall with most of them. The cardboard, of course, will take the most of the hit, and then this is where the control comes in. As you saw at the end of that little firing, is that they are hitting in behind the target, coming through here, hitting the towel, and dropping directly to the ground. Now, they did move around on the ground a little bit, because of course, they are BBs, but they're really staying in a small area that is super easy just to sweep up after. So we're not finding them on the other side of the garage or taking off the paint of the car, which was a problem, or even, I mean, we're all wearing iPro, but you could be sitting there reloading one of your pistols or one of your rifles and you're taking them off the side of the head and no one really meant that to happen. But what's happening is, is these towels, they're literally men. They're just Walmart towels. I paid $7 Canadian for these and I have six of them in here. We've built targets all over the place. The wood, we're talking $3 and I'm gonna say 70 cents for an eight foot piece of two by four. Uh, I think it was um, $1.50 for an eight foot piece of the two by two. So do your math there, a $7 towel and the cardboard was easy. I work at a car dealership. We just took the bottoms of the boxes for the all weather mat systems. So let that be a lesson to you if you're a shooter. Just go to a car dealership and ask for their boxes. They're ready, they're ready to give them up. They don't want to recycle them. And all we did, of course, up here, we just ran some screws in to hold the towel up, and then the targets are just held on with a couple more screws that we just pushed them up there. And, of course, because we want to practice lots of range stuff, there are six of them around the room right now, and we've got stuff set up in here that we can bomb around and practice everything. Our pistols, our rifles, getting around a workbench, and then a whole bunch of other stuff if we move the Jeep or the car out. We've got a ton of room. Now over the next, I'd have to say pretty much forever, you're going to see a lot more stuff from us on a lot of different hobbies because basically it's less about RC and more about just all the stuff that we find fun as a family. And uh, so Airsoft will be part of it, a Jeep will be part of it, RC will still be a part of it. But for the next little while, you're going to see fun stuff like reviews on things like this High Kappa. You're going to see reviews on big bad boys like this on all of our equipment. And one of the reasons why we want to do reviews on this stuff is because who are not professionals at this stuff? Just like everything else that the Scale Freak or the Average Joe does, we're new at this. So one of the things that we've noticed is we watch a lot of videos on this stuff and it can be pretty intimidating when ex-military who are uh, retired vets telling you all about the tactics that they used and stuff like this and all of these pro shooters telling you everything about these airsoft guns. And you know what? It's kind of hard to think about going to a field when these guys are going to be out there playing. So we built a range at home to be able to practice some of the drills that we see online. But ultimately, we're, we're just the average Joe. We're just the average Steve. Tosh is totally into it. 
And uh, we're going to do the best we can to show you what our adventures are all year. So guys, keep checking it out. If you've got any questions, of course, there's that open box below that we call the comment field. We all answer stuff in there. Uh, you're going to find him under Tailored RC, or Tailored Adventure, sorry. You're going to find me under Scale Freak. Tosh will get in there as Devil Tosh. And if you ask a question for Bear, we'll even answer that for him as well. So guys, thanks for checking out. Build these targets at home, man. They're super, super easy. And again, it's going to keep things a lot cleaner. And you're going to be able to get all your practice in. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Have a great night.